Greetings, everyone. I'd like to well, introduce you to my good friend, Luciano. What do we know about Luciano Oni Kino? Well, Luciano has a BA, Bachelor of Arts, RMT, Registered Massage Therapist, Emotional Fitness Coach. He is a lifelong learner, embracing traumatic experiences as the catalyst for growth. With a BA in psychology, exploring various caregiving roles with youth and children, honed his ability to connect with others. As RMT, registered massage therapist, he facilitates his patients' healings, healing journeys by cultivating a deepened body awareness. As an EFC, Emotional Fitness Coach, he invites his practitioners, fellow listeners, to embolden their self-awareness. Entrenched in the belief, this is the greatest gift one can provide one's self. Luciano, how are you, buddy? I'm doing really well. I'm really happy to be here, and I'm, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to, to go a little deeper and uh, maybe unpack a little bit of what is behind that introduction and what maybe brought me to choosing those words as they came through me and ended up on the paper. So thank you for inviting me here. And uh, I look forward, I look forward to this. So a little bit behind, how about a little bit behind Luciano? Like Luciano, where you been all these years? Where'd you grow up? Where were you born? What were you doing when you were a, when you were a kid growing up, teenager? Can you kind of share us for over a couple of next couple of minutes a little bit about Luciano? Hmm. It sounds like a almost a name from maybe a different country. It definitely is a name. Not sure, but please share with us. <laughs> it's not a homebred Canadian name. Um, my my parents came to Canada in the fifties. Uh, they were immigrants from Italy, uh, post World War II, uh, mass exodus of Italians worldwide as a result of of the impacts of the war economically to to that part of the world as many other parts as well. Um, so they came to Canada, and they um, settled in Montreal. That's where I was born and raised, and I'm the last of six. Um, the traumatic events stem from, in my understanding right now, the traumatic events that I refer to in my bio is the way that I understand it for myself is uh, it's an intergenerational trauma that's just been passed on and he has made its way into my life. Um, me being born of parents who have experienced trauma. And, and how that gets passed on from generation to generation. And uh, now it's my turn to take the baton and figure out what to do with it. And if I were to sum up my whole life experience, basically it's been about what am I gonna do with it? Which inevitably led me to embarking on a 122 hour emotional fitness course. My journey to understand how I was going to process my trauma, which even at the beginning of the 122 hour course, wasn't even aware to me. The work that I had been doing stemmed from or began, if I was going to put a timeline on it, uh, about 30 years ago when I was in university getting my BA studying psychology. And I remember my motivation to going into psychology was I needed to understand myself. And I thought that that was the best way that I could do it at the time. Um, and, you know, that that degree and that education kind of got the ball rolling, so to speak. 30 years later, I'm embarked in uh, an emotional fitness um, course, 122 hour course. After, you know, counseling, marriage counseling, um, being medicated for depression, um, all in the efforts of trying to get a deepened understanding of my traumatic events 
had passed been passed on to me and what am I going to do with it? And I think a really nice uh, springboard from this point in, in uh, this conversation is that throughout the course that I was involved in, the emotional fitness training course, there was um, a little quote that, that came to me that made uh, the most sense to me. And it's something that I, I am uh, I'm holding on to right now. And I find myself referring back to it as I continue to grow and evolve and handle and understand my trauma and, and how that manifests itself through me and how I need to process it. And the emphasis is on that word process. And so that saying or that list, that, that little string of words that I, I hold on to right now as guide is, you know, it, it being my life, my experiences. It's not about what I'm going through, but it's about how I process what it is that I'm going through. Maybe to unpack that a little bit, it's an understanding for myself when I listen to those words or when I put them down on paper, you know, I realize that life happens. Life happens, you know, something great can happen. I got to process it. Those are, those are the easy ones, right? <laughs> At least for me, <laughs> great thing. I get a bonus, uh, you know, someone gives me a compliment or whatever. The great things in life happen. It's easy to process. I just take it on and I carry on, you know, and, rise up high but then there are times in my life where I've struggled I mentioned depression and, uh, part of the depression is you know low self-worth um, uh, financial issues and and difficulties uh, failed marriages um, poor relationships with myself poor relationships with others uh, those are the ones where, you know, I really needed to, needed to process them in order to understand what was behind them so that I can learn from them. And so in a nutshell, that's what it's about for me, that saying, and it's about what I process, how I process what I'm going through, not focusing on the, what I'm going through it has been a changer, you know, it's a game changer. Um, because it gives me a framework that I hold on to. It gives me a framework that I can refer to when I am feeling overwhelmed. And something that does come my way that I'm not particularly happy with, and I feel it in within myself that I am struggling. And I, and I, I get overwhelmed. I get anxious. And when I get anxious, I am useless to myself and to other people. And so understanding that I have tools, I've learned some tools and I continue to cultivate tools, resources, people even, that allow me to process my experiences, which render me more functional. Ultimately, I wanna be a functional, productive, proactive participant in this thing called life uh -huh. um, and so uh processing is is a really important part of my journey and i am i am extremely grateful when i am having exchanges with patients whether it's through massage therapy or if i'm acting as an emotional fitness coach when it feels appropriate and aligned for me to introduce that idea using my own experiences as a reference that I've learned to process my life experiences so that I can become functional. And I share that my journey and that, that, that saying with other people and, uh, Seeing, seeing how that can be impactful. Um, and I say that because I've learned one, a couple of things about myself 
recently, uh, in particular with regards to the self-growth and the self-awareness that I've cultivated through the Emotional Fitness course, that connecting with other people is extremely important for me. And everything that I have done, when I now can reflect back on my life and the choices that I've made and the avenues that I've taken, even though it was at a, at a level of understanding that wasn't available to me at the time, now that I can reflect back and I'm a little bit older, I have some life experience, I can reflect back, I can take stock. I realize that connecting with other people is, has been and continues to be continues to be extremely important for me. And it's no wonder that I'm a massage therapist. And it's no wonder that, you know, I was drawn to emotional fitness training when it was presented to me in a random conversation. And the more I learned about it, the more I was like, oh yeah, uh -huh. I, I can really relate to this stuff. And this again, I feel like is a really nice stepping platform to something else that I added in my bio about um, oh, I wish I could remember it right now. <laughs> I just had a brain fart. Um, a brain fart. Yes. <laughs> No, oh, we'll just let it go. If it if it comes up, it comes up. It was just a, a random association that that came up, and now it's gone. Mm. But it's in the bio, so. <laughs> mm. So, Luciano, some of the things I heard, yeah, was uh, experiencing the journey of intergenerational trauma. Okay. Uh depression, feeling overwhelmed, uh, and the experience of unpacking and processing some of my experiences with tools. Can you share a little bit more, Luciano, about the process of using my tools to unpack? and process my experiences. Sure. Um, I'm digging into my experiences as a student of emotional fitness and I will share that my, I think my favorite tool to use is, um, oh my God, time capsule. Time capsule? Time capsule. Hmm, tell me more. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's this thing, you know, that you jump down and you, the and you hopefully pick the right time frame. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, time capsule. Well, I get to experience for myself and explore for myself repeated patterns of thought and behavior. And through the tool, as it's being facilitated by a listener, and I would be the presenter in that particular case, I am taken through the journey of visiting myself at various times of my life, in the past, in the present, and in the future. Beginning with the present, finding a particular event in recent times that um, present an issue that I need to process and understand deeper and gain a deeper self-awareness. And then reflect back on a time in my childhood, perhaps, where there was an example of how I, I had begun establishing that pattern, perhaps. And then having a conversation with my younger self, my child self, and my present day self in that context. And unpacking that, processing that exchange, 
and then bringing that exchange, the present day situation that I initiated the entire tool with, and then projecting into the future um, with the idea of creating an ideal situation, an ideal interpretation or processed experience as related to the immediate situation and what that may possibly look like, and then inevitably creating an action plan. Now I've just described without detail of what one of my particular time capsule um, events have been like. I just explained the framework of what the time capsule tool looks like for anybody who might be curious to know what it's about. Mm. And, how it works. and so, but for me, I find again, that what I find most valuable personally with that particular tool is that I get to explore repeated patterns of thought and behavior. And why that's important to me is that I've realized that over my years, I'm 51. Um, I would repeat certain self-sabotaging thoughts and behaviors and would eventually end up repeating old patterns of self-destruction. And so where did that all come from? How did I, yeah, exactly. How <laughs> did, <laughs> Where I hope I don't scare from? anybody. <laughs> bit of a group. I like theater. Anyway, we'll just leave it at that. Um, yeah, how did that all come to be? My questions to myself. And through that tool, I was able to explore that and learn and learn and have a, a deepened understanding intergenerational trauma how did that manifest in my life oh my god i'm repeating things that were done to me i'm repeating things that were done to my father they were probably done to his father how do i deal with that because i don't want to repeat it anymore and i knew i i recall you know i recall being a young father i have three children there, I have one teenage son and two adult children, young adults. And uh, I recall early on in my, my fatherhood that I needed to break the cycle. I didn't even know what that meant other than I didn't want to do to my kids what was done to me. And so that informed the kind of father that I became. Just that whole idea that I want to break the cycle. So again, going back to the intergenerational trauma and how I was able to understand that and, and, and unpack that for myself so that I can process it. And, and through that deepened self-awareness, that deepened understanding of where this all came from and how it affects my consciousness, my unconsciousness, and how you know I adopted this certain victim mentality and I had to process that whole label in and of itself and appreciate that it's in the unpacking and in the processing that I get to really see the gifts that are available to me in all of my experiences. The really great and easy ones the most heart-wrenching, depressive, challenging ones, because there are gifts in there for me to learn from, to address, to unpack, to shine, and see the brilliance of it. That's, that's you know, time capsule allows me to, to do that. Mm. So, now, yeah. so what, you know, what, I, what I've heard during our time this morning is that um your parents were from Italy you were born yes. in Montreal mm -hmm. uh navigated through a journey of uh intergenerational trauma your version of it uh experienced uh depression feeling overwhelmed as a dad three kids went to school studied uh, BA in psychology with the intention of 
trying to study myself and figure out what's going on for me. He went on, did some studies in uh, RMT, registered massage therapist. He did emotional fitness coaching and found it was particularly important for yourself to, to process and unpack those experiences that you have with uh, the toolkit that you've been able to establish for yourself over a period as a human for over 50 years, 51 if I understood correctly, uh, and one of the one of the tools uh, that you've utilized has been time capsule uh, to be able to look at my repeated themes, patterns, self sabotaging behaviors. Um, yeah, so that's kind of some of the things I heard uh, during our time together. Mm -hmm. Luciana, what's next for you at this moment going forward? What's what is Luciano's action plan? Self care is number one. Mm. And I'm gonna I'm gonna use my uh, my RMT hat. I'm gonna put that on. Oh, I see it. I see your RMT hat. <laughs> 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 it's very early in the morning when this recording is happening so <laughs> wildest humor is very appropriate hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as an rmt uh as a massage therapist and and, and i um uh, i am having a session with a patient who presents with chronic dysfunction in a nutshell, it's doing something repeatedly day in, day out for extended periods of time, and the body adapts to that, and it creates pain, discomfort, reduced range of motion, et cetera. Then they come and see somebody like myself, help me, I have a tight shoulder, my tight neck, I can't move, whatever. And I treat them, and I share with them and I do the best that I can to help alleviate whatever tension is in the moment. And I share with them and I say, you know, coming to massage is wonderful. It's a great thing. It's a great tool that we can use manual manipulations of tissue to help release whatever is going on. However, the most important thing that one can do for their for themselves is daily care. And I give them some tools. I, I remind them that there's a triad, heat, water, and some gentle movement to address whatever corporal body dysfunction. And then I always finish with the only way or the best way to approach chronic dysfunction is with chronic function. So what do I do on a daily basis to help alleviate whatever pain or discomfort that I'm experiencing? in order to address whatever chronic dysfunction that I've created for myself. Self-care. How am I gonna to continue to process, I being Luciano, continue to process my intergenerational trauma and how it manifests itself through my physical and emotional and psychological and spiritual experience in this world? really comes down to what do I do on a daily basis to prepare myself for the next time I'm challenged, the next time that I'm overwhelmed, the next time that I become anxious or depressed. Mm. So what do I do today, Darren? I definitely drink my water and I incorporate some gentle movement and I Great opportunities to listen to myself. Great opportunities to listen to others. Definitely need to connect. So my self-care is paramount because I can't function without it. So that's that's my action plan to stay true to my self-care. Luciano, I'd like to thank you for your time and for sharing Luciano. Uh, with us today and i'd like to thank the viewer uh, for taking time to uh, listen to this and watch this video uh, 
please check below. There's a little bit of a write up on Luciano as well as Luciano's contact information. If you'd like to reach out to him and further this connection, whatever that looks like. Um, Luciano, final words. Gratitude. I am so grateful to have had this opportunity and for Darren, thank you for inviting me here. I didn't know what was going to come out. I didn't even know why we were meeting today. <laughs> so like to have this opportunity to just speak from my heart on the fly, impromptu, um, is, is really welcome. I love it. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful.